Matt and I are out and about early this morning trying to do the few things we need to get done before it gets hot. This week has been a real heat wave for us. We've had the hottest weather that we've had all summer. It's been really humid along with that high heat. On today's agenda is to do some harvesting if we see anything. Got some tomatoes I know and some okra, maybe a few beans here and there. And then other than that, maybe even our winter squash, we're gonna look at it and see if any of it's ready to harvest. Other than that, is the this time of the year, what we try to do is to start cleaning out. We try, sometimes the, our gardens don't get cleaned out till next spring when we're ready to plant in them again. But this year we're hoping to do better on that. So we're gonna start up here with this little small part of green beans behind me. They're all dead. Uh, there's some beans on them that you could eat, we could use as dried beans, but what we're gonna do is save those seeds for next year. So while I was working on the beans, and I got that cleaned up nicely, Matt was working on this area right here in front of that raised bed. All the growth that had come up since uh, back in the winter when we had it cut back, Thomas and his wonderful crew cut it back for us. He was working on cutting that down. It looks so much better. You can see the peas up there. That's on the list of things we need to harvest today. But what I'm excited about is once my hat cut back all the, there were some sweet gums and some other things growing up there, is you can see the irises that I planted on the bank and another little plant that I put up there. So that's wonderful. Those lived and they're growing and, and by next year they'll even get larger and hopefully they'll take away some of the weeds that Matt had to cut back. They likely won't, won't be able to combat the sweet gum tree that's there but at least they'll take over some of the weediness. We've already tore out a lot of stuff in these two beds. There's still some peppers growing that we're eating on and most of the cucumbers we've either pulled out or they're on their way out so I'm going to go ahead and pull down the cucumbers today and that'll be let one less thing to worry about in this area. So this is what okri looks like up close. It's a tall plant, it grows tall. You see there's a bee right there. Here's the, the really pretty bloom. It's got a beautiful bloom. And then here's one of the okra pods there. So when people grow okri, they do it different ways. A lot of people in our area, and this is how Pap did his, so that's how we do ours. When we cut that piece of okri, we cut that leaf off. Now there's people that believe got the little bee on me now there's people that believe that encourages the rest of the plant to put out more growth and then there's people that says no it don't it hinders it so that's just something you have to have to decide for yourself but we always have plenty of okra and that's how we do it because that's how pap taught us the xenas or old maids that i planted down here are finally starting to bloom. They're really pretty. I planted them early in the summer and a great big rain come and washed them all away. So I had to plant some more. That's why it took them so long to bloom. Sunshine's reached the backyard. So Matt and I've come up here in the front to see if any of the winter squash is ready for harvesting. Maybe there's a few, and how we tell is just when the vine that's going into the end of the big squash, whether it's a pumpkin or a green and white striped kushaw or whatever it is, butternut, just when it gets dry and brittle and you can just tell there's nothing else, no nutrients, in other words, going through it. And once we harvest them, then we put them on the porch, our covered porch, and we leave them out there for a good long while, and that kind of allows them to cure before we take them inside and then they'll just stay in our kitchen usually until we use them. Now, 
some of them will last maybe till this time next year. It's amazing how long winter squash last, whether it's a pumpkin, a candy roaster, a butternut squash, one of those green and white striped kushaw. But sometimes they don't last that long. So what I do is just ever so often I go through them and if there's one that looks like it's maybe getting a little soft or something like that, I go ahead and process it and put it up, you know, whether I'm gonna, maybe we'll eat some of it right then and the rest of it I'll put in the freezer. So they do last a long time. You just have to keep keep an eye on them to make sure that they're not, not going bad because that doesn't, you know, you can't say every last one of them is going to last till this time next year. Well, the only ones that were ready were a couple of butternut squash. The rest of them were going to leave a while longer. This may be the earliest we've ever ate a popsicle. Hurry and eat it in well. Yeah. I think mine already is. Very humid today already. Yeah. We were down there cutting the okri, now I'm itchy. Does okri itchy like that? Mm -mm. Makes my arms itchy. A lot of people will put on a long sleeve shirt or something. I usually just deal with the itchiness. It grows incredibly fast. So some of the ones we cut today were too, too large and too hard. And we just discard them. But it always reminds me of... Um, I read a book, it's a wonderful book, Gratitude for Shoes is the name of it. But in it, and it's, it was written by a lady from uh, our county here where we live about her life. In it, she talks about that they would let, a, a, if a pot of okra got too big like that, it gets really hard and dries out, that they would use it for a scrubbing brush. Yeah. Yeah, it would. <clears throat> you think about how hard it gets, mm -hmm. you know. When Granny was able, she'd come up here and cut my okra for me if I let it get away from me. She'd say, you need to cut it now. But she's right, you do. Once it gets, most varieties, once it gets to a larger piece of okra, it gets really tough. Some of them get so tough you can't even hardly cut them with a knife. I mean, they do get hard and tough. I think I read eating raw okra is good for your gut health. Really? Mm-hmm. Let's go get some. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I could eat it raw. It's not bad. I've eaten it after I read that two or three years ago. I don't know why I never told you that, but I've eaten it. It's not bad at all, it's especially the little ones, if you get a little one. It's not bad. Sunshine's gonna get us sitting here. Yep, and talk fast. Yeah. Gosh, it's hot. It is hot. Makes you think of all those hot sayings. I have a, I think I have a video about them. I could link to that. Matt says it's hotter than torment. Yeah. So I'll be glad this is gone for the year. I'll have about all I want. I had all I want in May. Mm -hmm. Little birds are going crazy over there. Mm -hmm. Are those finches or? I think so. I'm not much up on birds. I don't know. That one's yellow. 
Mm -hmm. Eating our sunflower seeds. They've dried out. Talking about it being hot. Some very nice subscribers, I think about seven people, sent me and Matt some of the fans that you wear around your neck. Very, very nice of you to send them. But unfortunately, they just didn't work for me and Matt. And maybe because our necks are little, I don't know. But when you bend over, there's two things. They flop around on your neck. And then also the sound. You know, if, if you're outside right now, you can hear the jar flies and hear the, those birds over there. And we really enjoy those sounds. So they, I wish, I, you know, if I'd have known you was going to send them, I could have told you they likely wouldn't work for us. But I will be glad to send them back to you. Uh, if you send me, email me, tipperpresley at gmail.com, I'll be glad to send them back to you. Or the ones that we used, you wouldn't want our sweat all over them. All of them will send you a brand new one. It's a strange thing about being a YouTuber when people send you gifts that you didn't expect or didn't ask for. I mean, you know, you never ask people to send you things. Uh, we do enjoy, of course, we're blessed by the stuff that people send. But it's a, a strange feeling, uh, and it leaves me feeling very bad sometimes uh, when people think that we didn't appreciate them or that, you know, I never seen them, you must not have liked it. Well, it'd be better, I think, to be honest and say, well, we, I just didn't, it wasn't something that we used instead of to pretend and put it on one time and then <laughs> throw it away or something. <clears throat> Uh, it's a it's a strange feeling. It leaves me feeling very very bad a lot of times, because I would never want to hurt anyone's feelings. And we do try to always send a thank you card if we have your address. If we don't have your address, if you send it from Amazon, there's a way to send a thank you that way. We do that, um, but that still leaves me feeling like I'm I don't know I guess embarrassed or ashamed or something. Um, that I didn't properly say thank you. And of course, there's people that don't expect thank you. I know there is, and I know they just send it because it's a gift and and they just wanted to, to bless somebody, and that's wonderful too. Um, a lot of people will even send gifts and they send it like it's from us to us. <laughs> so there's no way we could ever know where it come from, you know. Uh, so we're so appreciative of all that, but then I really feel bad when I feel like I've hurt somebody's feelings or or they're hurt because they're like, well, you say it's hot and you didn't wear the fan. Well, we tried the fans. It just didn't. It just didn't work for us. Maybe me and that Matt are strange or weird, or maybe our necks are too little, or uh, maybe we move around too much. But uh, when it just flops around or comes off one side, or and then the noise too. Uh, we joke about at my house the computer I use. The main computer I use to do all my editing, everything, the blog, everything I do online, other work I do online, is a very nice Mac. I've had it for a long time. We saved up and, and bought it when I first started on this YouTube journey. But there's one problem with it. It's a, It was common with that, uh, what do you call it, Matt, series or mm -hmm. that, that, model. that model of computer is the fan runs all the time. I've took it to people. Uh, to fix it and they thought they could fix it and then they didn't and then if you do fix it with a Mac you have to take it all apart it's just this whole complicated thing where it would cost me more to have them fix it and you know it's not hurting anything obviously because it's been three years and it's never quit running pretty much so mm -hmm. it's that constant sound so we joke that I already hear the 747 all the time I wear headphones that helps block that out some anyway but I, honestly, if you would like your fan back, I think there was about seven different people that sent us a fan. We'd be more than glad to mail it back to you. As I said, it's a strange thing for people to send you a gift. Uh, and, you know, of course, it's, you feel like you know us. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and we're glad that you feel like that. But it's hard. It's like at Christmas, I get my brother something. I think I got Paul tennis balls for I don't know how many years till he... Finally, one day, fessed up and told me I'd been buying the wrong ones and he couldn't use them. <laughs> and I was like, why didn't you just tell me, you know, but he didn't want to hurt my feelings. So he just said, you know, <clears throat> thank you. <laughs> and then he probably donated them to, to kids, like, you know, that wouldn't care. He's like a, um, what do you call, not a professional tennis player, but somebody that goes and plays tournaments and all mm -hmm. that. So he's really into his craft of tennis. But um, it's kind of the same thing. You try to, you just want to bless somebody and sometimes it doesn't. 
maybe something that they it turns out they can't use or whatever. But anyway, we are very thankful for all the blessings of the <clears throat> things people send us, surprise us with, and especially the beautiful cards and sharing about your life and all those kind of things mean so much to us, and we we really appreciate them. But again, my email is Tipper Presley at gmail.com and I'll be glad to, to send your fan back to you if you'd like for us to. Yeah, I'm just setting my ways with this thing. Yeah, Matt get uses that. Uh, all my life long, get, get them wet and shake them a time or two and air them out and they, and they get cold. Yeah. And then you yeah. wrap that around your neck and it, it cools your, what is that, your carotid artery I guess? Yeah. So it's not yeah. that we're not appreciative, it's just oh, no. this is what I've always done and I just can't get away from it. Right, and that we've always been outside, so mm -hmm. we don't. We do complain, we love humans, you know, we love to say it's so hot, it's so hot, or it's so cold, but, but it's not going to stop me and Matt from being outside. No. No. So we're used to the sweat and the stuff, but we do like to say we're hot because it's hot, it is. You know, people like to talk about the weather, whether it's hot or it's cold or it's raining or it's dry. Um, I feel bad for people this summer that's been so, the drought, especially the people in Canada that's, oh my goodness, those forest fires. I wish we could send our rain, I wish we could rearrange those kind of things. But it is something that as humans, we talk about a lot about the, you know, like we were saying the sayings, it's hotter than a $2 pistol or it's, what's one of the cold ones, cold as whiz, cold mm -hmm. as kraut, mm -hmm. all those things. So it is something that we, we end up talking about a lot. I think it's, I guess, because all humans, we have that in common, the weather. Those little birds are just going crazy. <laughs> yeah. They're cute. Mm -hmm. Oh, those are two are going to fight now, though. It does feel good to get a little bit cleaned out this morning. Matt done a really nice job on this bank till he ran into a bee's nest and then he quit on that, going down that way. And then I didn't want him to go this way because my Joe Pie weed and my jewel weeds over there. But that looks way, way better. This looks better right here with the beans. Every time I come out the door, I would look at them and be like, it's easier to ignore the other parts of the yard that you don't see as much. We still need to, the Tommy Toes could definitely be took out. They're about done. Although when I took the, this usually happens, and I'm glad when I took down all the cucumbers, the rest of them, and I, there was a few cucumbers on them, so I got a few more, but the Tommy Toe over there that just reseeds itself, it's Matt's Cherries, the name of it. It's There's quite a few of them, and mm -hmm. usually it will just grow and be there. It's not a lot, like when you think about putting up food, but it'll be there till the frost gets it, so we can enjoy a little bit of, at least a handful of those little match cherries till the sun, or I mean, till the frost gets it. You wanna scoot down slightly? Sun's hitting you in the head. Whatever you wanna do. We could scoot, scoot one, one way this way. All right, we moved moved down away so the sunshine wouldn't be right on Matt's head, but he said this would be good for a minute and then it'll be back. Give you a better view of our of what we cleaned out and what we need to clean out, that horrible blackberry patch behind that. That's the one thing that we totally let get away from us. Well, we did my flowers too, though, and then we got those cleaned up, so maybe that'll be our next project, Matt, the blackberries behind us. They need it. They need it bad. Yeah. So many things we just let go this year. But amazing, the bounty we still still got. And even today, we had huge... I think we got enough peas we can share with Granny of our Mississippi pink eyes. I went ahead and picked the watermelons. I doubt any of them are ripe enough to eat, but our chickens will eat them. But I went ahead and got them because the vines were just covered with the stupid squash bug. And I'm just like, I give up on that. And... What else did we get? The butternuts. Oh, and when I picked the Mississippi pink eye, I found three or four big onions up there. Really? Yeah, about that big that we'd forgot was in that bed. So, still giving us some bounty. Yep. Even though it's dying back, definitely. Yeah, it's getting toward the end. Yeah. Tomatoes about, just all about played out. Yeah, especially the Tommy toes. They, they look pretty bad. 
They need to be pulled up. I hope after this hot weather, I told Matt, I said, after this, I think it'll be cooler. He said, no, it won't. <laughs> he said, not yet. But I said, well, maybe it'll be cooler at night, you know, or cooler. I don't know. It'd be, have to be a little bit cooler. This would be the last big heat wave. You think, maybe? Mm, no. no, Matt, don't. Matt's not as hopeful as I am. <clears throat> no, we usually got hot weather in September. Yeah, but maybe it'll be cooler, cool off at night at least. It's been like, what, 70 when we get up in the morning? Well, which this is, morning. It was, and that's, it, and that's humid. really hot for here, for it to be that hot in the morning. So, and yeah. I know our heat's nothing compared to so many commenters, bless your hearts. I've heard, I mean, I read your comments about it being 110 and 107 and 103, like for so many days in a row. That has to be miserable. That is hot. Matt wouldn't be able to live there, would you? No, I would not. I mean, it's <laughs> all I can do to it. live here. <laughs> when my max is, you know, whatever it is. I mean, I can't, whatever's, whatever we've got here, I don't want no more because I'm maxed out and I can't work and can't function. Uh, whatever that temperature is. It's just just as bad as whatever somebody else's 110 is to me. Right, because you're not yeah. used to that. Yeah. Because yeah. I just can't deal with it. Yeah, but I do. I can't imagine living somewhere where it's that hot for that many, many days. Golly. It's the same, though, with me wanting snow all the time. Uh, if I had snow like a lot of people do, you know, just from, what, October till next March or something, or even April, I probably get tired of it. It's because I don't have it, that it's like a novelty that I really want it to snow. As I said, we, humans and the weather. I guess it's always been like that. I was going to complain. Yeah, always. Except when it's 20 and about that much frost. That's what you like. And Gosh, Matt ain't yeah. complaining. Matt be saying, come out here, Tipper. Come out here. you got to feel this. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. One other thing I was going to uh, share with you is that Granny had her appointment this week. So we do have more news about her cancer. And it was more hopeful than we thought. Of course, there's still a lot of unknowns. But the doctor that we saw, a cancer specialist, he's hopeful that they might be able to, with chemotherapy and radiation, shrink the mass and then have a, a, a surgeon who specializes in that to remove it. There's, there's a big bunch of ifs along the way. We know that. But that was more hope than we, we thought. He does not think it's stage four. He's not sure if it's stage three, two, or one. That he's ordered uh, some other tests that would show more. His concern was because it's in the pelvis region, it might be in other places there, but it did not appear that it was in her liver or anywhere else. So, well, that's where we're at now. And so many people, we just appreciate your prayers and you've put her on prayer change. You did the same thing for Miss Cindy. We could never repay you for that. And we know the prayers really helped Miss Cindy. Yes, she died. But you helped her get, I think they helped her get to that point. She went so quickly. She suffered some, but not like so many other people do. It was a blessing that she went so quickly. Um, so I know your prayers for Granny. That's probably why we got good news, was all the prayers, all the people praying for Granny. So it was much better news. I totally expected it was going to be the repeat of Miss Cindy, um, the stuff they told her. So uh, now she has to, as I said, have a few more tests and see that surgeon. And, and he may have a different, he may say he's not so sure about taking it out. But for now, we've got a glimmer of hope. Um, and we really appreciate that. And Granny's so thankful for all the cards that people have sent her. And, and people have sent her some gifts too, some crocheting books and things like that. But it just tickles her to death. She'll say, I don't know who that is. And I, but they're so nice. I'm like, I know, Granny, I know. They just see you on the internet, and they love you. So she really tickles her to, to get stuff in the mail. And so she's, yesterday was a very encouraging day for her to hear that news, too, I think. So mm -hmm. so we'll just take it one day of a time, at a time and, and see what happens. In the meantime, she's staying busy. She's making, this week she's been making, it's uh, they kind of look like skates. You've probably seen them, little crocheted. 
boots, it, but this is supposed to be Santa's boots, but then it's got a paper clip at the bottom, so it looks like a skate, and it's just little Christmas decorations. She's making some to go with everybody's. She's already been making decorations for everybody in her family that she'll give at Christmas, so she's been making those little little skate boots this week, the Santa's skate boots, so. So she's staying busy, and then Matt come home one day and said he seen her out in the garden with a hoe. Mm -hmm. So she's out there. It was a little concerning. <laughs> yeah, out there in the garden. And her garden, a lot of people have asked us about it. It never done nothing this year. No. It was just the biggest fail of everything. Her whole garden was like our squash and zucchini. Yeah. So. You just don't get enough sunlight. Well. And the ground ain't that good. And uh, yeah, but usually it grows stuff, yeah. especially in that f further part. But anyway, it didn't, and maybe it was a good thing because it kept her out of it, but I yeah. don't know. And she didn't feel good enough. She's not felt good enough to be out there like she usually would either. So there's always next year. That's the hope of a gardener, mm -hmm. always next year. Maybe since Matt's at home with me now, we, this winter we can manage to put some compost and do some things to improve her soil. Yeah. And if she'll let Matt do some trimming. Yeah, you gotta do some trimming. Yeah. You got to. I'd do some here too if somebody else would let me. Yeah. What would you trim? Just as much as you'd let me. You just push it all back about 20 feet? No, I mean, I just everything is just hanging and closing in. And it just needs to be cut. You did cut a bunch yesterday yeah. out there. It yeah, looks it's better. just one little spot though. Well, you can cut wherever you want it to. It needs to go all the way around. What I'd like to do is those. The side oaks. of the house, those oaks, but I, I'm going to have to rent a lift or something and go up in there to get them. Yeah. yeah. I'm too old to climb. Yeah. I'm not coordinated enough. I'm doing good climbing a tree to hunt, but I'm not going to do, I'm not going to climb up there yeah. in them things to cut them. Matt used to, used to, used to wood, used to wood climb up a tree and take a chainsaw and saw his way down. I used to be 20 too. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. And you're smart not to do it now. <coughs> I know. And it, it was dangerous then. You're probably stupid to do it then, but you lived. But yeah, and then there's a bunch of trees times. out through here yeah. I'd like to cut totally down, but I'm a little cautious on them too because yeah. a big tree like that a key. Yeah. It sure will. It's dangerous, dangerous work. And I like it, but I'm just dangerous. a little bit scared of it. Yeah. I keep hoping a big wind will come through here and blow them down. It'd be a big wind. <coughs> it might blow us down. Well, they're big trees, big pines, and they, they're big, big yeah, pines. Yeah, you could just they, they'll blow, you can blow, blow them down. Blow them that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, even if they come this way, they wouldn't hit the house or no. nothing. They just make be, a mess. Make a mess, but yeah. Well, what you gonna do now? Put all this mess up, I guess. And Get you something to eat? Yeah, I never did eat breakfast. I didn't eat breakfast either. We just got out here. That was our breakfast was our popsicle. Popsicle and coffee. You had coffee. And I, mean, I had a whole pot of coffee. I had post them and then we come out and trying to get ahead of the heat. heat. What I'd like to have is a big pan of biscuits and gravy. Well, that, that might... The rest of the day would be shot if I did that. Oh, I was going to say that might be able to be arranged for you. Be nice, but it's a little bit late now. Maybe you settle for a mater sandwich. I don't think we got any maters big enough, do we? I think so. I think I've seen some back there. You better enjoy them while you can. Yeah, they're about gone. Because I ain't going to buy none. I'll just wait till next year. Could open a can of tomato sauce and smear that on some bread I, over the winter. I told you that, and you said you didn't <laughs> think that would work. No. No. No, I ain't doing that. Yeah. I'll just hold out, and the longer you hold out, the better it is when you do get one. Yeah. A good it's one. like the joy of summer, the mm. tomatoes and mm. the tommy toes and the fresh cucumbers and all the goodness, all the things, as they say. We don't do them apples. Well, there's only two or three, but... Well, there's several in that other tree. Yeah, well, we need to get them. Make apple sauce or just enjoy it since there's not really a whole lot. Maybe put them in the fridge and just enjoy them this winter. I ate one of them yesterday. They're good. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Well, 
Well, we're always appreciative when you stop by to visit with us when we're working in the garden, making a garden to feed our family here in the mountains of Appalachia. And we appreciate all the other things you do for us too. You really do help us with our endeavor of celebrating Appalachia. The sunshine's got you again. Yeah. He's right, it wasn't gonna take long. Yeah. Here, I'll do this for you. Then you'd be in the shade. Yeah. That's real good. You should just follow me around like that. I could. Yeah, it'd be great. It's like those people in the you see in the you know, I don't know, kings and stuff way back, they had people doing that for them. Yeah. You want me to be your queen and or your servant and just do that? Yeah. Get you an umbrella and carry it around you. Oh, there's a little hummingbird too out there with those. It wasn't on the uh, sunflowers, it was on the Cosmo there. That's a Cosmo. It's those flowers, those pink ones there. I know nothing about flowers. I don't know much. You'd think I'd learned after all these years of being everywhere. I don't know. Only thing, only one I know for sure is a hosta. We got plenty of them, don't yeah. we? Um, look how pretty those, that's the nasturtium, but look, just that little view at the grow bags there, how mm -hmm. orange that is, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. They're probably one of my favorite flowers, nasturtiums. Yep. The first big frost, they'll just be... Yeah, they can't stand that. Can't can stand they? it, yeah. Look how big that comfrey has got that I've got in that bag. See it? That big, big leafed thing there, right yeah. behind the buckets, yeah. yeah. I need to, you can do, that's like a medicinal plant. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. But I need to get it out of that and tear it apart and then plant it. A lot of people plant it around their apple trees. We could plant it around that apple tree right there. Will it reverse the aging process? Yeah, let me get some put on us. You will? No. So that's what I need. What's that? Is that that little hummingbird? Is oh, that wasn't a hummingbird? Okay, what's it? Is it eating the tomatoes? It was on that tomato plant on that Tommy Cut. Oh, or I bet. Good. Go over there and eat them all. It's yeah, probably the stray. Well, they don't hurt the tomatoes. It's probably a stray squash bug that's climbed up there from the cucumbers since I disturbed their home, tore their little playhouse down. Yeah. That's why I pulled up the watermelons. I was like, I just can't take y'all no more this year. I'm tear your playhouse down, then you'll have to go somewhere else to find something to eat. I've been eating on that lizard's tail. It's gone. Probably all of them. Oh, she loves them things, don't she? She does. It ain't hurting at none. It's running along. Sunshine's beating on you. Mm -hmm. Beating on your head. You're gonna be sunburned. All right, come on. All right. 